Hi, welcome to Curvy 3D Go. I'm going to start by showing you some of the, the shortcuts you need to get the most out of Curvy. Um, these are based on the Q, E, W, E, R, T keys, Control S for save, spacebar to deselect, and right to click to select. So I'm going to start with a right click and show you that on our demo object, We've got an object on the left made out of curves, and an object on the right which has been sculpted and merged together. You can click on the objects in the Groups panel on the right to select them and hide them with a the little eye icon. For the moment, let's look at the Dino Sketch. So I've picked the Move tool from the top toolbar, but I could have used W on the keyboard. Now I'm right-clicking to select the body and right-clicking again to select Curve. The curve goes yellow when it's selected. Uh, pressing T to get the Pull tool and drag the curve around. Right-clicking on one of the fins, use W to move, E to rotate. Um, you'll notice it's rotating with a, a sort of snappy motion, a snap motion. I can turn off the snap on the top toolbar and get a smooth rotate. We can orbit the screen using the control on the bottom left or hold, um, using the, the tool from the toolbar at the top. Now to create things in the top left in the toolbox there's a creations button and that opens the creations tools. So we're going to start by drawing a line object. Uh, we can carry on and draw another line object. Notice I've got the tips in the bottom left showing which keys I'm pressing. So I press W to move. If I hold Shift while I've got the Move tool, I'll move in and out of the, the screen. So that's Shift and Move to move in and out of the screen. Quite handy. In the top right, I can change the, the resolution of the object, how many triangles it uses, and also change some other properties. For the line, this is the radius. And if you change the radius B, you can make the two ends have different sizes to make horns and tendrils and such. I can change some options for this primitive. So I can change the, the cap ends option to give it a flat end or a rounded end. Now I'm going to try a, a lathe object. Now the simple lathe is one curve from top to bottom and it's rotated round. For a more complicated lathe, I like to switch to the four views mode, where you can see top, left, front, and perspective views. So you can see different sides all at once of your model. Now with the curvy lathe object, you can draw more than one curve. You can draw two curves together, draw the back, and three curves to draw the side of an object. And quite often you want to draw a symmetrical object, so I'll turn on lathe symmetry in the top right. This means that the third curve is mirrored over automatically, so you just can control both sides at once. And this is useful for making torsos, limbs, heads, all sorts of tails, all sorts of parts of a body. Now, new in Curvy 3D Go, a couple of tools to help you edit curves easily. There's an align curves tool which straightens up the curve and also these auto auto lathe tools um, which create extra curves around your model um, which you can then edit some more so if you added say the auto four line lathe then you can change only one quarter of the, the model at once and yeah edit each quarter independently Typically one, two, and three lines are uh, all you'll need for a lathe, but you can use more if you like. Switching back into the single view, to show you a couple more of the creation tools. Um, the lathe has got different cap styles at the end. Um, we can turn off the caps for a hollow shape, or we can use rounded or flat caps at the end. Um, so to see the inside of the hollowed area, we turn on double-sided on the top right. Okay, 
to more primitives. The blob just lets you draw a loop, which turns into a round primitive. The slab lets you draw a loop, which turns into a sort of right angled edge primitive. Now the one clever trick with the slab, you don't have to stop at one curve. If I draw a second curve, it'll cut a hole out of the existing slab. Um, it's very useful for making the few hard edged elements like belt buckles um, and other, other small hard edge shapes. And we can change the depth and the, the bevel size on that too. Loft object, slightly trickier because you have to draw two or three curves to work it. Um, you draw a long and then the start and the finish curve. Um, you can add thickness and bevel to this as well. I use this quite a lot for detailing clothes and costumes. Um, where little flaps of material or, or folds can be made with the loft. So once we've drawn some models with curves, I want to edit those curves. So we've already seen the pull tool, uh, which can just drag any part of the model around. There's also the local rotate tool to twist a bit of the curve. Useful for aligning the ends. Um, and then there's lots of rule, ruler and curve tools. The ruler will straighten off a part. Um, the semicircle tool lets you uh, create a semicircle or a semi-ellipse at a point. If you hold down shift after you've drawn one of these tools, you can tweak the, the shape of the curve. So here I'm holding down shift to create little bulges of, with different radii. Um, and you'll notice the two, the semicircle and the circle segment work slightly differently with shift held down. Um, then there's the redraw a simple line, which really smooths out a curve a lot. Um, so another new tool in Curvy 3D Go is a uh, curve optimization. So we've drawn a slab here using lots lots of points and each point is turned into a set of faces on the on the slab. If we use curve curve optimize and increase the distance we can reduce the number of points in that curve. But notice that the at the corners that are left they've become very smoothed off. If we turn on sharpen and increase the the sharpen threshold we can turn those smooth corners into uh, neatly beveled corners. Now we can see there's sharp edges at corners. Again useful for making the odd uh, sharp edged object in your otherwise curvy scene. We've also got a set of um, simple primitives. Spheres, cubes, cylinders, um, And when we're ready to sculpt, those will turn into sculpting meshes. And you can pick between two different styles of sculpting meshes. You can have normal meshes, which support quads and are quite fast, or adaptive subdivision meshes, which uh, add new resolution as you draw with your brush. So for now, I'm going to turn into adaptive sub resolution mesh. And when I draw, it'll add new triangles as I sketch, as I sculpt. Got a variety of tools, um, clay, inflate, smooth, polish, and you can see what each one does in the little video tooltips if you hover over them. This is the pinch brush, which is squeezing the mesh together, and we have the inflate brush. Each of the brushes can have um, a pinch as well. So if you use the, say, the sub brush with a pinch, it'll make um, a nice crease effect, which is one I use a lot for detailing models. You've got the pull brush again, where we can just drag parts of the surface around. And 
All right, now another useful tool for sculpting is Mirror Sculpt. Just access that on the left, and that'll repeat whatever you're doing on the right hand side, on the left hand side. I'm just holding S to give it a lot of smooth. Um, let's just make this uh, an asymmetrical object again. Let's add lots of noise on one side. Imagine that we, we want to do some sculpting just on one side, not the other. And then we decide to make it symmetrical. You can use Mesh Mirror to copy everything on the right hand side over to the left um, to make sure it syncs again. There are lots of other mesh tools uh, at the bottom of the panel, mirroring, joining, detaching. Um, one in particular, which is worth noting, is the, the merge tool. So I'm just going to make a few quick primitives to start us off. And then I'm going to hold shift and select drag over. Sorry, I'm going to hold shift and drag over the items in the groups panel to select them all and then use edit group. I could use Control G to group all those objects together. Uh, you can also drag things in and out of the group in the Groups panel. And once they're grouped, I'm going to use Voxel Merge, which will combine them all with a smooth skin, ready for sculpting. So I just deselect that and do a little bit of smoothing with S and it's a smooth sculptable skin and you can sculpt over the surface. This is what I did of course for the dino model. I selected all the pieces in his head, his eyes, um, his tail, his legs and used a, a merge so they were ready to sculpt over the top of. Now that's just about all for this quick start video. I'll be producing some more uh, tutorials showing you different features in Kirby 3D Go and also stay tuned because we're in early access so there'll be lots more development and there's lots more planned for the coming months on uh, Kirby 3D Go on early access. Bye!